But there's a problem with rejection sampling. If the evidence is unlikely, you end up rejecting a lot of the samples. Let's go back to the alarm network where we had variables for a burglary and for an alarm. And say we're interested in computing the probability of a burglary given that the alarm goes off. The problem is that burglaries are very infrequent. So most of the samples we would get would end up being, we start with generating a B, and we get a minus B, and then a minus A. We go back and say, uh, does this match? No, we have to reject this sample. So we generate another sample, and we get another minus B, minus A. We reject that. We get another minus B, minus A. And we keep rejecting, and eventually we get a positive B. But we'd end up spending a lot of time rejecting samples. So we're going to introduce a new method called likelihood weighting that generates samples so that we can keep every one. With likelihood weighting, we fix the evidence variables, that is, we say that A will always be positive, and then we sample the rest of the variables. So then we get samples that we want. We would get a list like minus B plus A, minus B plus A, plus B plus A. We get to keep every sample, but we have a problem. The resulting uh, set of samples is inconsistent. We can fix that, however, by assigning a probability to each sample and weighing them correctly. In likelihood weighting, we're going to be collecting samples just like before, but we're going to add a probabilistic weight to each sample. Now let's say we want to compute the probability of rain given that the sprinklers are on and the grass is wet. We start as before. We make a choice for cloudy, and let's say that again we choose uh, cloudy being positive. Now we want to make a choice for sprinkler, but we're constrained to always choose sprinkler being positive, so we'll make that choice. And we know we were dealing with cloudy being positive. So we're in this row, and we were forced to make the choice of sprinkler being positive, and that has a probability of only 0.1. So we'll put that 0.1 into the weight. Next, we'll look at the rain variable. And here we're not constrained in any way, so we make a choice according to the uh, probability tables, with cloudy being positive. And let's say that uh, we choose the more popular choice, and rain gets the positive value. Now we look at wet grass. We're constrained to choose positive, And we know that the parents are also positive. So we're dealing with this row here. Since it's a constrained choice, we're going to add in or multiply in an additional weight, and I want you to tell me what that weight should be. And the answer is, we're looking for the probability of having a positive W given a positive S and a positive R, so that's in this row, so it's 0.99. So we take our old weight and multiply it by 0.99, give us a final weight of 0.099 for a sample of plus C, plus S, plus R, and plus W. When we include the weights, counting this sample that was forced to have a plus S and a plus W with a weight of 0.099, instead of counting it as, as a full one sample, we find that likelihood weighting is also consistent. Likelihood weighting is a great technique, but it doesn't solve all our problems. Suppose we wanted to compute the probability of C 
given plus s and plus r. In other words, we're constraining sprinkler and rain to always be positive. Since we use the evidence when we generate a, a node that has that evidence as parents, the wet grass node will always get good values based on that evidence. But the cloudy node won't. And so it will be generating uh, values at random without looking at these values. And most of the time, or some of the time, it'll be generating values that don't go well with the evidence. Now, we won't have to reject them like we do in rejection sampling, but they'll have a low probability associated with them.